a $5,000 stimulus check is going out soon to eligible people. We have some good news, everybody, from the IRS, and it's that the IRS is returning employees who used to process tax returns and other paperwork back to their old jobs for the next eight months to help the agency cut through its massive backlog. This plan is reassigning agency employees who previously worked in the IRS Accounts Management Group, but have moved on to other jobs at the IRS. The IRS commissioner said the current resources simply are not enough to overcome the challenge. So he's putting people out of their new post to leverage their prior experience. This is all due to the crisis that began nearly two years ago, which forced the IRS to temporarily close many facilities nationwide and shift most employees into telework, which meant huge amounts of mail that the agency received from taxpayers started, started piling up. So while workers put a dent into the first into it during the first year of the problem, the mail backlog snowballed since last year. All went stimulus checks, crisis relief legislation, economic impact payments, child tax credit payments, and tax breaks were given to businesses. The paper processing problems have delayed tax refunds and also triggered automatic notices to taxpayers that they owe money to. They'd already replied to previous notices, but those replies were still sitting in mail piles. The IRS entered the stack, the state of the IRS entered the start of tax filing season this year, which began January 24th, with more than 8 million original and amended individual tax returns unprocessed. Another roughly 1.5 million unprocessed original and amended business returns, and close to 5 million of letters. But the good news is that taxpayers could receive refund payments within just two or three weeks. There was also some new changes this year for anyone who received the expanded monthly child tax credit payment last year. The extended CTC of 2021 is a one time payment and a benefit payout to parents that is part of the federal government's relief funding delivered in response to the crisis. The child tax credit is only available to every year. It's only available every year to parents, but it's typically only available to parents who pay taxes. Last year, the credit was available to all parents with children ages 17 and under. Further, the credit was fully refundable and there was no need to ever pay it back. Parents whose children were born in 2020 and were able to claim the credit, but now parents who had children born by the end of 2021 will also be able to claim the credit. New parents will be able to receive up to five grand this year based on last year's taxes through the 2021 recovery bay credit. The full benefit of the child tax credit for last year is $3,600 ages for children age six and under, including newborns. Another $1,400 can also be claimed through the recovery bay credit for dependent children. Meaning, you can claim your newborn for this credit as well, bringing the total to $5,000. This $1,400 payment was part of the third stimulus payments that President Biden was sent out. General, I think uh, there's uh, widespread agreement that you're the right man for the job. Uh, we need to get you back um, to, um, to your base and, and, and get you involved in that deployment. I'm almost tempted to um, yield back my time so you can get on uh, about that, but but I'm not I'm not quite convinced that I should do that. Let me let me ask you about money. Um, we are uh, we're now spending money for the Pentagon that was decided more than on more than a year ago, and that's because of our failure to have a defense appropriation bill. We're about to do another contending resolution. It, it, people in this town. From the administration, really to DOD, to the Congress, seem to sort of view this as an inconvenience and a little bit of a lapse. Is, is How big of a problem is this? And I've, I've got several questions, but is, is this merely an inconvenience or is CENTCOM going to really uh, take a hit because we can't do our job? Senator, I can't speak on behalf of CENTCOM, but I can tell you my personal experience in 18th Airborne Corps. When we have prolonged uh, CRs, it affects readiness, it affects our ability to, to train, it affects our combat training centers, our rotor wing flight hours, and our, we, I have two armor brigade combat teams in the 18th Airborne Corps, they're very expensive uh, to operate. It affects uh, modernization, it can disrupt modernization. I have an armor brigade combat team that's in a year-long modernization window. Uh, they'll emerge as the most modernized armor brigade combat team in the Army. Um, a CRs can disrupt that. I don't know the impact if it was to take it all the way out through the year. And then I have a second one that's Armor Brigade Combat Team that's going in this summer. And lastly, it can affect quality of life. Uh, it stops the prevention of new starts, such as military construction for barracks, motor pools, and child development centers. Okay, well, um, may, maybe uh, I may be speaking to the choir uh, about this in, in this room, but, but it seems so when, when we bring this up, and, and any number of members of this committee bring it up. People nod and agree with you, and, and yet 
Uh, we're just going to be uh, quite relaxed next week about going to another continuing resolution. Let me ask you about the stands that were formerly uh, Soviet Republic. And I'm, and I'm looking at the map here, uh, General, and I see Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan, and then the massive geographic area of Kazakhstan, which, which uh, covers five time zones. Uh, why, are, uh, why are they important to us in the United States? And what uh, difference did it make uh, in, in their leadership seeing how we left Afghanistan and what I view as a, a major debacle? Senator, they're very important. That is an area also that I think we compete with Russia and China. Um, I think with the departure from Afghanistan, there is some security interest that we share with them, and that is in terms of those that border on Afghanistan, uh, particularly Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. Um, I think we have shared interest on the VEOs and areas that we could potentially uh, partnership with them on the border security to prevent the expansion of the VEOs from coming into their area. But you, you haven't started this job yet, but you're anticipating that you will. Has, has the leadership of these five former Soviet republics acted differently after seeing what happened um, last August in Kabul? Senator, I, I am not sure, and if confirmed, that is an area that I would, I would take a hard look at. If, um, if Russia invades Ukraine, um, how will that, in your judgment, affect how these five former Soviet republic republics view their neighbor to the north in the United States? Senator, I believe they would have some concerns um, with Russia invading Ukraine, um, as that would look to expand potentially their former, uh, one of their former locations. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I have two words for today, crack pipes. Crack pipes, not crack pots. Many of us went to bed last night, others waking up this morning, and heads are exploding across this nation as we learn that this administration is giving crack pipes to crack heads. I think when the history books are written about this president and 2020 through 24, that'll be the picture right next to the president's name, a picture of crack pipes being given out by this administration. I want to come back to that in a second, though. I have a picture of my dad today and our dog, Rennie. My dad and our family, my mom, an older brother,